Stop listening to your dad when he tells you that if you vote for a minor party, you're throwing your vote away. It's not how the Australian electoral system works at all. Let me explain. It's Voting 101 for 2022 with Matilda Bosley from The Guardian, Australia. Lots of people's first exposure to how voting works comes from TV shows, often from the US and UK. But there are heaps of differences between how elections over there work versus here in Australia. Perhaps the most important difference is that we use a preferential voting system, and those guys use first past the post. It's easiest to explain what this actually means by comparing these two ways of voting. So in first past the post elections, you cast your vote for the one candidate that you most want to win. Whoever gets the most votes gets elected. Simple. But there are some problems with that. Okay, so let's say you're voting in a lower house electorate and one of the huge election issues is public transport. There are three candidates. Two of them want to build a train station and the other one thinks that a ferry terminal would be way better. In the community, there are actually way more train loving voters, but oh no, their votes have been split and the ferry party gets in. Let's look at the same situation with a preferential system. Here, you don't just tick a box, you write numbers from one to, in this case, three, in the order of who you most want to win. They are your preferences. Now, the first round looks the same. Everyone's grouped next to their first preference. But wait, no candidate has the majority of the votes. No one has more than 50%. So that means we go to a second round. Locomotive Lovers has the least number of votes, so let's take them out of the running and all their supporters will now have their number two preference counted instead. All of a sudden, train time has more than 50%, so they win that seat. Of course, in a real election, there would be way more candidates and way more rounds and way more election issues, but basically this preferential voting system makes it a lot less risky to vote for a minor party or an independent candidate, as your vote will never be just thrown away. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about how to figure out what order you want your preferences to actually be in. In the real world, it's worth remembering that Labor and the Liberal National Coalition are by far the most dominant party. So in most electorates, eventually it will come down to a competition between the two of them. If either of these guys are your favorite, easy peasy. Just put a one next to their name before numbering all the other candidates in order of your preference. If you do want to vote for a minor party, but still have a preference of if you prefer a Labor government or a Liberal National Coalition government, just put whoever you like as number one and then make sure you eventually put your preferred big boy party before the other. If it does come down to it, your vote for them will count for just as much. Oh, oh, there's one more thing I need to tell you. When you go to the polling booth, all of the parties are going to hand you a leaflet that tells you how to vote for them. This card will show you the order they want you to put your preferences in that will give them the best chance of winning the seat. But it's important to note that you do not have to follow these recommendations at all. But if you really like that candidate or that party, sticking to their order does tend to help them the most. Basically, just go with your gut.